Hi, everybody. Welcome back once again. This is Mark Lawrence along with Andy Isco from TheLogicalApproach.com, Tony Mejia, playbook experts and a contributor to the sporting news. And we're welcoming you back for the 2024 college football preview. I'll just say a mini preview because we'll be doing a kickoff show here in a few weeks. But nonetheless, we're back to go over some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to handicapping football. And with that, I'm going to let you know it's being brought to you by the Playbook Football Preview Guide magazine which is we're doing the show on Wednesday to let you know they are in stock now. The magazines are in stock now, and they're flying off the shelves. A little bit about what we're going to be doing in the show will be some stats and facts from that particular preview guide magazine. They'll be on sale at all Barnes & Noble and Books A Million stores on Tuesday, July 15th. They're in stock now in Las Vegas at the Gambler's Book Club. So get your hands on a copy, 256 pages jam-packed with all the information you'll need to put yourself into the winner's circle this season. That's the Playbook Football Preview Guide Magazine. And with that, I'm going to welcome in Andy Isco and Tony Mejia, our co-producer Greg De Palma, also joining us on the round table today. Jim Feist will not be with us. Jim is going to contribute more from a NFL side of things throughout the NFL football season. So he's got a week off, a bye week this week, Jim does. But we'll be looking forward to Jim joining us on the show on down the road. With that, Andy, I know it's rather sultry, you're telling me, in Las Vegas these days. Tony and I are Floridians. We're down here in Florida where it's always kind of warm and steamy. But I understand you topping us right now. Yes, Mark. Uh, sultry occurred at about 5 a.m. this morning <laughs> when it was wow. about 99. Uh, right now we are at about 112, just past noon Pacific time. We are on our way up to a projected high today of about 117 which had been the record temperature for Las Vegas until this past Sunday when we blew past that record, hit 120. And that may not be the last time this week that we see 120. It's unusually warm for this time of the year. Uh, thank goodness that every place has air conditioning and every place has swimming pools. And uh, I am fully loaded for my uh, hydration break at the bottom of the hour. Well, like everybody in Las Vegas likes to say, Andy, but at least it's a dry heat. Uh, Tony and I suffer from a little bit of humidity when it gets warm down here. So at least you have the comfort, if it's comfortable, at 120 degrees <laughs> of having... As, comfor as comfortable as one could be at that uh, temperature, yes. <laughs> as it can possibly be. Tony Mejia, welcome back, bud. I hope you've had a good off season here. And I want to thank you very much for your contribution in this year's Playbook Football Preview Guide magazine. Tony brought us up to speed on a lot of what's happening in the college football transfer portal. That's a must read you and you pick up a copy. How's your summer been going these days, Tony? It's been pretty busy, Mark. I mean, baseball's been really uh, great all year. I, I had a lull there for about three weeks where uh, it was hit or miss and mostly miss. But for the, mo for the most part, it's been really solid handicapping uh, baseball. And uh, I recommend first five bets and uh, on the uh, on the unders and if, if, if on your sides and full game total overs. So that that's that's been my little secret to success early on. And then soccer's really been keeping me busy at the Euros and and uh, Copa America. So it's been fun doing that. And now we have football on the horizon. So I'm looking forward to the All Star break. While you guys are watching Home Run Derby, I will be setting up with uh, all the magazines, including yours. It's always a staple, so nothing new there. And uh, and setting my notes and, and getting my stuff together, which is a good segue to what we're going to be talking about, I think, uh, first and foremost. And that's uh, do's and don'ts and what we, what we kind of look forward to as we start uh, breaking down the season, which is very interesting. And again, we'll, we'll go into all this, but between the transfer portal, NIL, and now there's a new thing that I do, uh, obviously Vegas is hosting Big 12 Media Day, so I've been I've been keeping tabs on that because UCF is out there, and uh, it's hilarious that somebody from Kansas State goes, uh, well, now we have the NCAA football range, which is the equivalent of Madden, and everybody's excited about that because it went on hiatus forever due to, to due to the uh, NCAA and NIL stuff, uh, and now it's back and like Madden ratings, which NFL players obsess over, college football ratings will change from week to week. So somebody actually said, I don't know who it was, uh, this is more motivation to play even better. And that is 100% true with kids these days. So while uh, a lot of people are going to be saying, wow, once they get paid, I bet you, you know, paid and retired, 
uh, that's not going to be the case because they want the, their profile on their video games to be as uh, as exceptional as possible. So that's something added to the cupboard this year. All sorts of ways of people making money these days, especially in the world of sports, college football in particular, what our show is all about this week, this week I should say. I also want to welcome in Greg De Palma, the producer of our show. Greg, it's been a little bit of a long time since we visited last, but uh, nonetheless, I'm looking forward to working with you once again this football season. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think this is going to be a great year, and uh, especially in college football. Uh, this is going to be a year like no other. I know everybody's going to be confused early on, you know, trying to figure out who's where, and uh, the matchups are going to be incredible too. Uh, you can say what you want about, oh, now with the expanded playoffs, a regular season isn't going to matter much. Okay, well, maybe that'll be the case, I don't know, 10, 15 years from now. But just imagine how much fun we're going to have, and at least for years that I could just look at ahead where we're going to be getting these matchups that we just don't normally get to see with these uh, power teams, like from the Pac-12 coming to the Big Ten and, you know, Big 12 teams, uh, Oklahoma, Texas going to the SEC. It's, it's just going to be every week there's going to be some really awesome uh, big matchups that we just uh, haven't seen unless we watch bowl games at the end of the year. Uh, so I think uh, that's going to be even uh, uh, more exciting than we've ever seen before. So it's going to be awesome. Well, a lot of news for sports writers out there to feast on this offseason with all the changes happening in the world of college football and getting ready for this year's football season. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the best ways to get prepared for this football season. The best way that I do it is uh, a little bit of a self-promotion, but nonetheless, it is going right to my Playbook Football Preview Guide magazine because it helps me to familiarize myself with each team with outlines in each and every team. And I'm saying that because I wrote those outlines, so I know exactly what's going on, and it really helped me get a kickstart to the college football season coming up this year. And we're going to do a little roundtable here, and I'm going to ask Andy and Tony and uh, Greg what they look forward to doing and how they get prepared for the 2024 football season. And I'll say this. Some of the things that I do, uh, one of the things, the tools that I use is what I call an RPR returning production ranking. It's a great guide for getting yourself ready for the football season here. My good friend Bill Conley from ESPN put these numbers together. He devised them. And basically what they are in a nutshell is the amount of returning production of football teams brings back last year from what they had last year. And you, you can look at uh, with all the busyness going on in the college football transfer portal and the returning starters, how do you keep a track of all these things? Well, that's what Bill does. It's exactly what he does. And he has a real, real good handle on doing things just like that. Uh, people like returning starters, but I've fallen more in love with these RPR numbers. And uh, I'll say this, if you follow those RPR numbers last year, and those numbers, by the way, are in and on each team's page in the Preview Guide magazine. It's a must-go to look at before you even think about making a wager, your, at least your first wager this football season. Last year, the top four teams in RPR rankings last year, the year before that, before they uh, they soldier themselves into these top four ranking spots, they were 31 and 22 overall and 22, 26, 22 and two to the spread. Now those four teams with this wealth of returning production coming back last year, they went 41 and 12 straight up and 30 and 19 to the spread. I'll just tip, uh, give you a little tip of the hand here that Iowa State happens to be the number one returning production ranking team this football season. The bottom four teams last year on the flip side of this equation, coming into last year, they were 23 and 27 outright and 16 and 30 of the spread. Bill sorted them down, down to the bottom four and they end up going 10 and 38 straight up, 16, 27 and one to the spread. Excuse me, Mark, I, yes. I have a, a question and sure. I don't know if you've done the work on this, but I'll explain why where sure. I'm looking at. When you give the records of these teams straight up and against the spread for the top four and the bottom four, Yes. Have you done a breakdown as to, let's say, over the first six games and the final six games? Because I would think the records for the four teams with the best starters would be early in the season as everything gets settled in. And similarly, for the bottom four teams, I would think that the their bad records would be in the first half of the season because they've got more to get accustomed to before the season gets to the midway point. Well, leave it up to AI, a great nugget there, Andy, and that's exactly what the case is. This is a great tool to use to get yourself out of the gate in strong fashion, especially the first four weeks of the month of September. When you're coming back solid, you've got a lot of uh, production behind you. 
everybody knows everybody. These teams get off and they bolt out of the gate. The other way around, they really tend to struggle like a horse left standing at the gate. The team that's going to be likely left standing at the gate this year, according to these rankings, that ranks dead last in college football this year in returning production rankings is Air Force, number 134 in the country. Tell you another thing that I look for when I'm getting ready for the football season is I'll look in the preview guide magazine and I'll look at the statistical review of each team to gauge whether or not their cuffs and collars matched last football season. And when I say that, what I'm talking about is meaning did they improve offensively and defensively in the stats, but regress straight up and against the spread to the money. If these football teams did just that, they improved statistically, but they went backwards straight up and against the spread. Those are hidden gem teams because they played a lot better in the field than their money record indicated here. And you can find yourself a handful of good looking teams that way this year. You can sort those out in the magazine. On the flip side, the other way, just flip it around. Teams that uh, also slipped offensively and defensively, but were good to the money last year. They'll come back to the norm this year. So it only makes common sense to look at those teams to revert what they did if they were on the high end and the low end of the, of the statistical category. And the third thing that I do uh, is I look at the schedules of each team that they're going to be tackling this football season here. And you look at some teams that are taking on lightweight cupcake-like schedules, and that's based quickly in the in the preview guide magazine you can see what their opponent's win-loss record was last year and if you take that for a quick guide uh, you'll notice that the teams that the team that's fared up against weak teams you're going to find florida atlantic is going to play only two teams that had a winning record last year florida atlantic or fau so they should probably be able to capitalize on something like that then you go to the flip side the opposite end of the equation teams like southern cal they're going to face, of their 12 opponents this year, 11 of those teams were in bowl games last football season. That and the fact that they're moving over to the Big uh, the Big Ten, I think it's going to be – that will ultimately end up playing against them. You've also got Georgia Tech, who's going up against 11 bowl teams this year. Florida State, their first 10 games are against bowl teams. And we might as well throw in a group of five team, Old Dominion, their last 10 games of the season, all against bowl teams. And finally, before I turn it over to the guys uh, – there's one thing that I ferret out and I look for is called mission teams. And th these have really been a staple in my handicapping library for me. And they make all the sense in the world. Uh, and what you want to do is you want to look for teams that last year did not go bowling after having a streak of three or more years in a row where they were bowlers. So that streak was snapped. They're a mission team. They're back with the mission, back with the vendetta. And you'll find those teams also to be outlined in the preview guide magazine. I'll tell you this, teams like BYU and Cincinnati, they're both in the Big 12 Conference. They're two of the teams that qualify this year. So keep an eye out for the Cougars and the Bearcats. I think they're going to end up making more money than they lose this year. With that, I'm going to turn it back over to Tony Mejia. And Tony, I'm going to ask you, what are some of the things that you're looking at to kick start your football season? Well, I think I'm going to be, as uh, most you know, non-handicappers, going to sort out my conferences because obviously with the Pac-12 disbanding, we've got teams all over the place. And so on that note, then I will start breaking down travel and uh, what these teams are going to be looking at and the challenges they'll be facing as they go on from week to week. I'm not one of those guys, and this takes me out of the win total thing, although you know, once I, once I make determinations, like a couple of years ago, I think I was big on Baylor uh and so there are instances where i'm like oh i really like this team i think they're undervalued but for the most part i stay out of the projected win total game just because i think we get into a, a trap where you're like oh that's a win and that's a win oh wow what an easy schedule because obviously from week to week you face injuries you've got uh, you know challenges that you end up uh and we've got upsets yeah and and, and so from that standpoint, I stay away from that. But once once I get all the, the conference breakdowns, I look at projected two deeps. I go to uh, beat writers and I start following what's going on in the you know lead up to the season. And, and the football is great in terms of and more so than basketball, more so than in even baseball. Uh, football is great in allowing access. And even though coaches really don't like to tell you anything, it, the football beat writers are the, the kings of, of the uh, sports journalism world. Those are the beats that everybody wants. 
So they're accomplished reporters. They ask good questions. They typically get, uh, you know, camp battles uh, sorted out. So if who's winning the quarterback battle, you ask every day, you kind of see a little cracking of the glass as to who is actually competing it well. And, and, and then what comes into play is, all right, well, this guy was expected to play a massive role. He's such a leader somewhere along the way. Uh, you know, a coach will say, well, this guy's invaluable. He's going to call out the defensive signals and boom, he gets hurt. And that goes in my notebook as something that I really need to keep an eye out for because in football, it's a battle of attrition over the course of, you know, 12, 16 weeks, you lose guys, the next, next man up steps up and, you know, that becomes something that you look at as a, a learning experience. You learn on the gig uh, and if, if you're being projected by odds makers t- to cover a spread based on preseason expectations and the guys that are expected to be your leaders aren't there in week three, uh, then that's where I think you dominate in terms of our, our purposes of, of sports handicapping. So, you know, the, the, the generic is week one dominance leads to week two overreactions from a spread standpoint. But I like to look forward in terms of personnel because, you know, everybody is going to love Georgia and Alabama and all these teams that are, are stacked. But, you know, when you look in the middle of the, the 30 to 80 range, uh, that's where teams will face the most challenges and you can make the most money, I think, that way. I love it. Tony Mejia keeps notes, and I can't tell you how valuable that is. And I know Andy Isco uh, is – I, without even knowing Andy, what he does to prepare each week, I know he's a note keeper uh, because he refers to a lot of stats, and it's a great way what Tony says to keep notes on football teams because, as he says, attrition happens to a lot of teams, especially in the second half and the latter portion of the season. So if you've got your magazine, you've got your book, you've got your schedule, keep notes on those football teams. Adjust them each and every week, and you'll find yourself following – the course of the uh, of whether it's success or going the other way for those football teams, but great tidbit from Tony Mejia. Andy, what are your what are your plans here to get ready for this football season? One of the one of the primary things you look to do. Well, I use a combination of what both you and Tony said. I rely a lot on the historical information that's included in the uh, play playbook preview. Uh, for example, you mentioned schedules, and you look at the number of uh, the, the way a schedule unfolds as far as bowl teams played. Well. You know, 25 years ago, to me, that was a significant tool to use, but I've modified that over the years because almost two-thirds of all 133, now 134 teams make it to bowl game. So I sort of break down the schedule by looking at what, you know, well, how, how many teams and what's the sequence against teams with losing records from last year. Then I break up the, quote, bowl team caliber type teams how many teams were, say, 6-6 six and six or 7-5? and five? That's one group. How many of those teams were 8-4 um, and four or 9-3? and three? That's a second group. And then how many teams on their schedule were double-digit win teams? So I sort of break the bowl teams down into quality of bowl team based upon uh, the record. I do look at returning production and returning starters, keeping that in context as to the caliber. Uh, you know, when teams like uh, Georgia or Alabama don't have as many returning starters as other teams, that's not necessarily a negative for me because the second and third team as are now starters this year are A, probably – better recruits than some of the teams that are going to be fielding starters this year who had action last year. And number two, they recruit so much depth and they often get out to some comfortable leads in their games that the guys who are starting this year probably had significant playing time last year, although they were in a reserve role, sometimes going up against opposing starters, often going up against backups, but often seeing close to you know between a quarter and a half of action uh, after the game was pretty much well in hand at uh, halftime. I do take a look at conference affiliation changes, and that's going to be something that's uh, going to be very important this year as far as keeping track of which teams uh, struggle. I'll be interested to see, for example, how Oklahoma and Texas fare now that they've got to go into the SEC and, for the most part, 
play legitimate defenses that they didn't see in the uh, Pac, uh, in the uh, Big 12 for a number of years. Same thing with the teams from the Pac-12, which has been an offensive-oriented conference for many years. Now they're going to go into, uh, well, they're going to go into the Big 12. They're going to go a couple into the ACC. They're going to go into the Big 10. They're going to go up against teams, especially those going into the Big 10, who will be going up against defenses that are of a gen- generally a better caliber than the ones that uh, those teams have been seeing. So that's sort of what I do to prepare for this season. Again, I will make notes as the uh, summer season unfolds, key injuries, etc., that will not be reflected. The key magazines, of course, we've got yours, Mark, uh, that is very largely statistical based. The, the other major publications that I rely on are the Athlon and the Lindy's. I especially like the Lindy's, especially in the pros, because they actually have their full rosters and they have comments on each individual player, not just, you know, the defensive line or whatever. Right. But that gives me an idea of the experience that those teams are returning. Uh, and they give me more of a, uh, a non-gambling related overview or projection for the season. That information, however, is stale pretty much by the time they hit the uh, newsstand. So if I have questions about a certain team, I'll visit those uh, teams' websites over the course of the season. You mentioned one other factor that is important, and I do, I've been doing this for a number of years, and it seems to work out very nicely. I use two sets of power ratings. I use what I call my historic power ratings, and I don't make adjustments. Whatever the team ended at the end of last year, I start with at this year. But I also start this year every team with the same equal power rating. Obviously, Alabama is not going to be rated the same as um, Akron. <laughs> yeah, Akron or Florida right. Atlantic. Right. Usually it takes three to five, sometimes three to six weeks, however, for the everybody starts equal ratings to catch up the historical ratings as adjusted for the first few weeks of the season. In other words, some teams, even a team like Georgia, may not be as strong as they were last year. I'll still carry over that rating and let that rating adjust itself because I will use more in the early season, not so much the power ratings respective to what line they produce, but relative to the quality of team they are. And I'll use scheduling dynamics and, well, like you talked about, returning production, the the better teams, the weaker teams, and what kind of team they are. I mean, if a team like uh, Illinois returns a lot of starters, that's not the same as if um, Florida Atlantic returns a lot, or Air Force, well, Air Force is the other way around, we, we mentioned, but uh, let's say a Boise State might return a lot of starters. The quality of the program related to the number of starters they return generally within the conference however keep within that within the context that a large of large part of september schedule is non-conference games i would say uh, of the first four games of the season three of them might be non-conference one of them might be conference for the vast majority of teams good points from andy isco the logical approach.com in las vegas one of the best football newsletters in the country i encourage you to check out the logical approach weekly football newsletter Go online now at TheLogicalApproach.com. And Greg, Andy mentioned something that uh, of course sort of hit a bell with me when he was talking about it. Uh, Texas and Oklahoma moving from the Big 12 into the SEC to see how they fare against a better brand of defensive teams. And uh, you think a person would do well to maybe go back and look at some historical moves that have happened in the past, like Texas A&M moving out of the Big 12 into the SEC and see how they fared initially in a situation like that. That's a question, but I also want to know what else it is that you're looking to do to get ready for this football season. I think that because the landscape of college football has changed so much, even since Texas A&M joined the SEC, I probably I wouldn't take much credence into whatever those stats would be, but I think it would be interesting to find out uh, because you could just only imagine that most teams would struggle. Um, but uh, I think what would be the most important, and of course specific to this type of show, is the handicapping, the point spread. So uh, I think that would also be very interesting, probably even more interesting to me than maybe what they're, how, how long did it take them to uh, produce a winning season or how long did it take them to get back into the national landscape as far as a, you know, a, a true national championship contender and recruiting and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I think that's definitely something that, matter of fact, it's, uh, it's probably one of those questions, Mark, that we should probably answer for our viewers at some point before the season begins. So, uh, I, uh, otherwise, uh, I think that uh, setting up research for this season and every season for me, uh, besides obviously checking out Playbook Sports, uh, the magazine, 
uh, checking out uh, Phil Steele's magazine is is uh, is still relevant, even though I'm sure there's a ton of players that were signed in the transfer portal uh, that you're gonna have to add onto the list like never before. And you know that feeling, Mark, <laughs> putting the yeah, magazine tell, together. Tell me about it. Yeah. Right, tell me about it, yes. <laughs> so, uh, and then also uh, Pro Football Focus, of course, does a really good job. Why not use them? Uh, they've got a full staff uh, with, that follows the teams and the players. And whether or not, again, you're going to be 100% uh, on with their stats, uh, you shouldn't be. But just use it as just another handicapping tool in your arsenal. And, of course, with our lads, uh, because college football, uh, obviously huge with our lads with the uh, with the draft. Uh, they're going to have a big season this season on their new YouTube channel, the R Lads uh, football channel. So they're going to have uh, scouting uh, uh, videos each week, gearing up for the 25 draft. And then, of course, you're also going to have an opportunity to talk about a lot of the young players entering the NFL, which is great for fantasy football, especially people like me that, that uh, are in dynasty leagues in fantasy football. So get a really good opportunity to find out what's going on with these college kids uh, just making their way into the NFL. And then I think uh, this year, more than any, the big difference is going to be, obviously, the transfer portal. And I haven't even gotten to that point yet because it was like the last thing that I wanted to do before I decided to start researching everything for this season as a whole and making predictions and all that. I wanted to wait as long as possible before I felt that you know a good 90 to 95 percent of the top players had already transferred. And I think we're at that point right now. So... Uh, the transfer portal is just so huge this season. You can't not know what's going on there because if you're if you're if you're ignorant to that uh, uh, research, you're going to be left behind. Um, and then uh, based on just working and doing uh, my own videos on whether it's Prime Sports Network or our lads, I love the opportunity I get in the month of August to interview about 30 or 40 of. Uh, you know some of the top program insiders. I get an opportunity to just talk to these guys that are always that are around the team, uh, whether or not they're editors for their football program, or they have their own college uh, T magazine website. Uh, it's a great opportunity for me to pick their brains and ask them a ton of questions, and I get to find out things that not a lot of other people do because I get that opportunity to interview them. And so I try to do uh, as many interviews as I can in the month of August. By, by the uh, way, Mark, let, let yeah. just in, in conjunction with the transfer portal, I haven't found a site yet, and I'm still, I've been looking almost every day. Break down the transfer portal into projected starters versus backups, because if you can find the information on which members of the transfer portal are expected to be starters, you're looking at teams that you're looking at players who have college experience, just not necessarily with their new team. And you may want to factor that into both the returning starters that ref that generally reflect returning starters from last year's team for the specific team, as well as recruiting rankings, where you could also put projected starters from the transfer portal in addition to whatever the recruiting ranking is as far as the number and quality of the players that come in through that means. Well, that was a little bit of the problem we had this offseason putting the preview guide together, Andy, is uh, there was not a lot of information out there as it usually has been in the past. Uh, I was just absolutely livid about the lack of information. You would go to these websites and it was almost as if the SID, sports information directors, weren't even employed at those schools anymore. They weren't at all uh, favorable about sharing information. Uh, when you talk about the uh, transfer portal, uh, I'll, I'll just say this. There's some really great information inside that guy. Tony Mejia put a great article together. We have a ranking of from 247 sports of who did, who did good and who did bad inside those rankings. But I'll say this. While I don't have, I'm not privy to those answers that you just, or, or questions that you just asked, uh, Andy, I do know that uh, Bill Conley and Phil Steele together, uh, the two of those guys, meld in the transfer portal players into their either returning production rankings or their returning starters as well as anybody in the country. When Phil puts his returning starters together here, uh, you can look at a team, I'll give you an example. You can look at a team that uh, may have had, uh, may have had, may have lost four offensive linemen, uh, but the people that they're bringing in from the transfer portal were starters, were offensive linemen that were starters at other programs and they figured to start at this school they will be counted as an offense uh, as a returning starter. 
So, you know, there, there's a mathematical formula that they use to do this. I just don't know who the names of those players are, but uh, I would really put a lot of credence in what it is that Phil Steele and Bill Conley do as far as returning starters and returning production goes. Now, the and, returning, pr- pr- returning production, is that just offense or does it include defense no, production as well? It's, it's, it's all the contributions offensively and defensively. And, you know, it, 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 if you're, you're building a football team and you're a, a staunch defensive football team, uh, you're going to go and look there first to see what kind of returning production is coming back because that's where they made their hay uh, with, with the defense. But it is on both sides of the football. And, in fact, in these RPR rankings that uh, Conley puts together that we have in the magazine, those are broken down offensively and defensively. So you get a, a feel for uh, where they rank statistically amongst all other teams. And, and, that's, invalu- to- and that's invaluable. By the way, yes, it is. It's absolutely invaluable. It's, it's the first go-to thing that I that I do, and I have to agree a whole hundred percent of what Greg said about how important it is of gathering information. Uh, it's like my barber. When I go to my barber's, there's a sign in the door when you leave, and it says, "You're only as good as your last haircut." Well, when it comes to handicapping, you're only as good as the information that you that you can wrap your arms around, and that holds true at the beginning of each and every football season. You're tuned in to Mark Lawrence Against the Spread, the nation's most popular sports handicapping talk show. And if you like what we're doing, I highly encourage you to click on the like button down below. And if you've got any questions or comments, we've got all the answers. Simply click on the comment button below, and we'll be glad to answer those questions for you as well. With that, let's move it over now to another segment here. And we're going to talk a little bit here about some of the best moments and some of the biggest concerns we have about the upcoming 2024 college football season. Some of the things that uh, we're looking forward to the most this football season, I'll start it out with something just plain simple. I think every college football fan out there can relate to it and would be thumbs up on this. But my best moment I think that I will see in the 2024 college football season will be the final pairings when the 12 teams in the all new college football playoffs are announced. Uh, we, We will finally have made that move and it will be really interesting because there'll be a lot, a lot of uh, people drawing back and forth about how did this team not get there? How did this team get there? When we only had four teams, uh, it wasn't so much conjecture because you're, you're looking for the four best teams in all of college football. Now we're going to be talking about 12 teams here. That's going to open the door to some teams that were maybe on the cusp in years past and will be on the cusp this year. On the flip side of all this, my biggest concern for the college football season this year is obviously how the recent merger from the power five conferences will play out now that they're known as power four conferences uh how will this transition work you're finding uh you know the the demise of the pac-12 conference which is an utter shame to have let something like that happen but nonetheless most of the teams in that conference found homes albeit miles and miles and miles away from home they found new homes uh and i'm concerned here also about how the new NCAA ruling is going to affect schools that is going to allow those schools to pay the players to play. It's going to, the upside of that is it's going to do a, a lot away with the transfer portal because they're going to sign contracts to play football at their university. So they won't be hopscotching all around looking for the best bid and so forth and whatnot, at least while they're under contract. And uh, it's sort of sad to see that coming to college sports because uh, it makes you wonder where amateur sports is headed today. I think it's right down the drain. But nonetheless, that's my biggest concern heading into the 2024 football season. Tony, what's your thoughts and concerns? What are you looking forward to the most, or what do you see the best thing happening this football season, and what's your biggest concern? Well, um, best moment for me coming up, August 29th, first uh, kickoff, FBC Mortgage Stadium against uh, where Chip Kelly made his name, UCF against New Hampshire. New that Hampshire, means, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that means to me that uh, the season is here. But uh, for everybody else's purposes, I'm really looking forward to, and this is in September, uh, Alabama with you know, new era, Kalen DeBoer hosting Georgia, and it is hosting, right? Yes. Hosting them after playing Wisconsin at, at, you know, at, at, at Cap Randall. And that's going to be tremendous because it's, it's going to either say going forward, we're going to see a brand new Alabama that we don't have to treat with as much respect. Or damn, you know, uh, DeBoer is going to pick up right where Nick Saban left off, and uh, and we'll see how Georgia itself uh, handles that challenge. To uh, to to me, they're the number one team going into this, bar none. I know a lot of other uh, people like 
Ohio State's talent. They, to me, have to prove it on the field. I like everything about Georgia right now, the depth, uh, the continuity, whatnot. So that's that, that, to me, is going to be a proving ground. And then we'll we'll see how it, it, things unfold. Obviously, you, you know, you went to the end of the season, and that's going to be tremendous seeing the, the you know, 12-team playoff. Uh, you know, nobody's going to be feeling or slighted. Oh, I'm sure the 13th team will. But, uh, you know, if you, if you don't get into the top 12, you didn't deserve to get in, in my opinion. All right. So, and then uh, rivalry games. We've got, you know, selfishly again, UCF plays Arizona at home and then at Arizona State. And that's a Big 12 game. So just, you and Utah BYU is, is a Big 12 game. And it's it's one of those contests that, is going to be a defining moment for a, a, a new look league, and that and the ACC, the way it looks now. I mean, these are things that we're going to have to roll with the punches with. But I, I'm I'm really thrilled that we're going to get to, and hopefully, my biggest concern, I guess, lies in with that. Hopefully, it's not something that's like a shiny new coin that you're like, oh, this sucks. Uh, hopefully, it lives up to build. Good insight from Tony Mejia, Playbook expert. You can check everything Tony's doing out at playbooksports.com for all of his daily best bet selections. Check it out, Tony Mejia at Playbook Experts at playbooksports.com. Andy, same question to you, bud, uh, on this mini college football preview show that we're doing here. We're going to have one more topic. We're going to wrap things up with following this. But what is it, Andy, that you think might end up being the best moment that you'll see this 2024 season? And what's the biggest concern to you about this year? Well, Tony touched upon the one that I had immediately when I saw this question came to mind, and that's the September 28th game between Georgia and uh, Alabama. And, of course, you know, we know the ties no more uh, Nick Saban and the successor to to Nick Saban as perhaps the best coach in college football, his former assistant, Kirby Smart, who's now been the coach at uh, Georgia for a number of years. Uh, I'll be interested to see what happens. Uh, Tony mentioned the schedule. Uh, Georgia actually, uh, both of these teams have a week off. They play September 14th. Uh, Georgia uh, will be hosting, um, uh, was I think Kentucky, whereas uh, Alabama will be at, um, I'm, I'm sorry, Georgia will be at Kentucky, Alabama will be at Wisconsin two weeks before they face one another. And I'll also be interested to see how Georgia performs this year, given the fact that they were left out last year. Of course, it was controversial with them in Florida State as well. And of course, what Georgia did to Florida State think they were pissed off 63 to 3 against Florida State in their uh, uh, in the Rose Bowl I'll be interested to see how that carries over this year and I'll also be interested to see how Alabama performs uh, in the uh, post saving era and I'll have a little bit more about that in one of our upcoming uh, segments as far as the major concern and you both touched upon it how will the new conference alignments affect the teams that are moving in how will teams like Stanford and Cal fare going up against the ACC when they have to travel across the country, and I forget which one it is. I think Cal does not have uh, back-to-back games out on the East Coast where they might spend the week there uh, with their uh, you know, student uh, uh, tutors or whatever to take care of the educational aspect of a student athlete. I believe um, that uh, Stanford does have one situation where they, are, where they are back on the East Coast in back-to-back weeks. I'll be interested, as I mentioned before, the concern, how will Texas and Oklahoma do? Now, Texas, of course, they had that big upset of Alabama last year. They uh, come in with a highly ranked team, some, some outstanding quarterback expectations, and I wonder how they will adjust to moving to the SEC. I'm not quite sure that they will be as successful as perhaps Oklahoma, who comes in with a lot less in the way of national expectations, but they've always been a power team. We'll see how they do when they step up. You talked about A&M. They had a fairly smooth transition into the SEC when they made that move. Arkansas, back in the early 1990s, sure. I think they may have been the first team to uh, transfer uh, out of what was the old uh, uh, Big Eight Conference into the uh, uh, in, into the SEC. It took them a while to get situated, and they've had ups and downs since then. So my concern will be how some of these teams will do in their new conferences. I expect some will do better than expected. Some will do worse than expected, and that's my job over the next six weeks to sort of sort those two those two groups into the over uh, the the over expectations and the under expectations. Andy Isco from TheLogicalApproach.com as he looks at the upcoming 2024 college football season. Greg De Palma, what's your thought? What do you think is going to be the biggest highlight of the college football season, and what do you think is your biggest concern going in? 
Well, uh, I, sort of, you've kind of touched up on it already. I, I, I just think it's going to be uh, December 20th. Uh, it's a Friday night. It's the first playoff game. It's on campus, uh, followed by three Saturday games on campus. And you're going to have eight teams vying for the first ever playoff games in FBS history. And uh, that's, that's going to be the biggest moment for me. And I think a lot of fans... And, uh, and again, I just don't think that uh, there's some people uh, in sports that realize exactly how big this is going to be. So uh, the combination of that seeding process obviously is huge, but just getting those games in, watching a playoff game, watching the number five seed against the number 12 seed, uh, and, and, and you know wondering if there's going to be an upset or two and who's going to get upset. Uh, That's going to be my, that's what I'm looking for. That's going to be, I think, what's going to be the biggest moment. Um, As far as biggest concerns is is along the same lines. And that is, are they going to continue to screw the group of five teams? Uh, If they're still called group of five. Um, You know, so if Boise State uh, has a big season, what are they going to do? Uh, And then some of those other schools uh, that... Memphis, right. Yes. So what are they going to do? Uh, That's, I, I, we, we just going to, I'm just going to keep my fingers crossed and hope that they don't get screwed. uh, Because uh, even though I I agree with Tony a hundred percent on it, look, if you're the 13th team, uh, you have nothing to complain about. Nobody cares. And I completely agree, but that 13th team better not be some really good group of five team uh, while no group of five teams get into the playoffs. So that would be the thing I'd be worried about the most. Point well taken. Uh, I would say this, that whoever that number 13 team is, we're doing the 2025 mini college football preview, it would probably be the answer to a trivia question. Who was the number 13 team the previous year? Nobody knows. Nobody cares if you don't make the college football playoff, unless, as Greg says, it happened to have been a group of five football team. And with that, I want to remind everybody here that this show is being brought to you by the 2024 Playbook football preview guide magazine they're in stock now at our offices you can log on at playbooksports.com they're also in stock at the gamblers bookstore in las vegas they do a terrific job with these magazines each and every year they sold out two years in a row and they've also come back for more each of the previous two years so if you're in vegas you want to get out there before they do sell out as you mentioned they will be on sale at barnes and noble books a million bookstores on tuesday july 15th our final closing thoughts on this show here, guys, is uh, I want to ask each of each and, uh, you guys here two questions. Number one, which major surprise team makes the college football playoff this year? And the other one will be which major college football team does not surprisingly make the college football playoff this year? I'll start it off here and I'll hand it uh, off as we go, as we move forward there, I'll hand it off to Andy Isco. Uh, the college football team that I think will be the surprise team this football season I'm going to ride the Matt Rule train, I should say, Matt Rule train this football season and look for Nebraska to finally break on through to the other side after seven losing years in a row. And if you look at Matt Rule's DNA, this is all about what he does. He takes football teams that have been struggling. He takes over those programs, and by year three, he turns them from losers to winners. He's in year three at Nebraska. His teams that he's been with in college football the first year that he inherited those teams went eight and 28. But he went 44 and 23 straight up and 41 and 22 of the spread after those first three seasons. Look for Nebraska to make their breakthrough this football season. I'm not going to go so far as to say they'll make the playoffs, but I think they're going to be a nice surprise football team. My major college football team that I think surprising and will not make the college football playoff. I'm going to apply all the negative elements that exist surrounding this particular football team and call for a stunning non-invitation into the college football playoff. This team brings only three starters back from last year. They suffered the second most penalties in all of college football last year. They ranked 125th in the country in returning production, so they're light on that side of the scale. They're also bringing in a new head coach who the last time when he was a new head coach at a new program, his team won one football game. I think this team changing conferences is not going to make the college football playoff, and my vote is going to be to play against and fade the Washington Huskies this year. I don't think going into the Pac-10, or actually the Big Ten this year, after coming oh so close last year, is going to serve this team well. Those are my little observations and views uh, as I see it coming up here. Andy, or I should say Tony, 
What are your major college football surprise team and disappointing teams this year? Well, I think it's going to come out of the Big 12. I'm hoping it's going to be UCF. KJ Jefferson's the quarterback. Gus Malzahn says he's had to. to uh, <laughs> I love it. To damn you. Oh, well, no, but, but, but let me finish. Let me finish. No, you, Penny you, no that was a good start from... with Jefferson. That was a good start. Yes. Definitely. Yes. But I don't think it will be us. I don't think it will be the Knights. I do expect it to be somebody like a Kansas. Oh, yeah. You have, yeah. I mean, you, you have a, a Jalen Daniels who is going to be in the Heisman talk. Uh, you you got a surprise potential team in Oklahoma State because they're loaded with, with talent. I just think it's going to be one of these teams that haven't had a lot, ton of success, although the Cowboys have reached Big 12 championships and whatnot. But uh, because of the new look conferences, are going to be having an opportunity and, and the, the expansion are going to be having an opportunity to climb to those biggest stages. Uh, but yeah, it, it's going to be a fun ride. And then because of this, because of the expansion, I expect, uh, you know, a blue blood to, uh, to falter and, and be it out. I think Alabama, Oklahoma as an elimination game. When is that? November 23rd. Yeah. That, 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 that's going to be my game. Alabama, Oklahoma, and I, I, I believe in, in uh, on my page, on the questionnaire you guys had me fill, who do I think is going to come below expectations this year? I think it's going to be the Sooners. So uh, I, I would have, but but because Alabama plays Georgia, uh, they'll probably get by Wisconsin, but Georgia, and then they play at Tennessee um, in, in mid-October. They got they got a trip to Baton Rouge. I mean, it's a it's a challenging early slate for Bo, uh, for DeBoer, and then at Oklahoma before the Iron Bowl. So, you know, Alabama has an opportunity to be Alabama this year. We'll see if, if they can. Uh, and then if uh, by my preseason expectations, I believe that they will win in uh, Norman. And so the Sooners will be my surprise team. Oklahoma Sooners, Tony Mejia surprise team this football season up and coming. Greg De Palma, you can let you wrap things up with who you think will be the surprise team and the most surprisingly disappointed team to not make the college football playoffs this year. Well, I don't know. Maybe this is going to surprise you or not. My, the team that I, if, if this is a surprise, I think it should be that I think will not make the postseason is my team, Michigan. And I think the biggest reason is clearly a quarterback. They have got, I mean, uh, from what I've seen from these kids, and I know I, I've already seen this kid, Orgy, uh, maybe he surprises me, uh, but the kid can't really pass the football all that well. He's an athlete. That's all he is. Uh, maybe he surprises me. If he does, they got a shot. Their offense, I mean, they have hardly anybody returning. Uh, the defense is going to be good, but you just lose Jim Harbaugh, and you lose your quarterback, and a lot of other important pieces, and I, I just can't see. The good thing is is that they have a favorable home schedule, meaning that they get to play Oregon and Texas at home. The bad thing is they have to play Oregon and Texas. So they have to play Oregon, Texas, Ohio State. And I just I don't know if they could beat any of those teams, to tell you the truth, because they're going to be uh, mismatched at quarterback. Um, I have a whole bunch of teams that I'm already looking at as far as surprise teams. Well, which uh, one of those do you think will make the playoffs, though? That's playoffs? The I'm going to go ahead. You know what? I'll say I'll say North Carolina State. NC I'll, State? NC State. And that's because, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of their quarterback. Uh, and uh, I've been a big fan for a while. Grayson McCall. Uh, interviewed him, had an opportunity to interview him last year as well, uh, and I think going to a big a big program like this now is something that NC State's been missing. They've been missing that special quarterback, and I think that's what Grayson McCall is. Um, the other teams, I mean, you've already mentioned it, Kansas, uh, Tony, and I also want to mention uh, Arizona uh, because I know they lose Jed Fish, but that's you know, and they lost a few players who transferred over with them. But they still have the quarterback. They still have the receiver. They still have a good running. I mean, they have some talent at Arizona, and um, and maybe they can continue uh, to make that uh, progress that they did under Jetfish. Well, Jed, and, and Utah, Utah's the preseason favorite in the Big Twelve, rightfully so, I think. But we I, we didn't even mention them, none of us. And and so you you mentioned Arizona, uh, BYU is going to be loaded. Uh, we both mentioned Kansas. There's uh, just so many teams that, that that conference, I think, is going to feature a surprise, be it Oklahoma State. Uh, we'll see what TCU is able to do. Uh, West Virginia has got that running back that's good. I, I think it's going to be a breakout candidate this season. So, like, uh, I'm, I'm big on the Big 12 this year as being 
not necessarily the best conference, I wouldn't say that, but the one that's going to deliver the biggest surprises. Andy Isco, save the best for last. Your view on who will be the surprise team to make the college football playoff and the team that surprisingly will not be in the playoffs. Well, I'm, I'm going to first give a vote to what Tony said. I think the Big 12 will be the most entertaining conference in football this year. We may see a lot of games, 45, 38, like that. And I think, especially with the departure of Oklahoma and Texas, the two big king, t uh, kingpins of that conference for many years, we will see uh, some very interesting races. I happen to think Kansas has a chance to be a, a nice surprise. I've liked the job that's been done over there the last few years as this program, and Kansas State as well both of those teams. We might see Kansas and Kansas State play for the uh, Big 12 championship this year. That would be uh, kind of interesting if things break a cer certain way. As far as a, a surprise team, I don't know that you can consider Alabama a surprise team because they're, they're usually ranked number one, two, or three in the country, and that's not the case this year, understandably so, with Nick Saban retiring uh, and uh, some of the additions into the conference. But uh, I made a play on um, Alabama to win the national title at, I think it was 15 to 1. They're right now between 13 and 15 to 1 in a lot of places. And here's where, Mark, the playbook comes in. Take a look at Caleb DeBoer. Look at what he's done the last four years. He took over a Fresno State team in the COVID year. I think they went 3-3 three and three in a shortened season. And then he had double-digit wins his next year, which got him the uh, job at Washington. And what's he, something like 27-3, and three, something along those lines in the two yes. years at, the, at Washington. He inherits a team that is loaded with talent, the returning quarterback, a solid defense, a strong recruiting uh, class. And you have to think that breathing a little bit of fresh life into the program, not that there's anything negative say, to say about Nick Saban, but a breath of fresh air with a different approach coming in. I think Alabama is going to be very much in contention for for not just making the playoffs, but the national championship as well. But I don't think that that's really a surprise team as far as exceeding expectations. And again, talking about a team that, again, is somewhat below the radar because of all the other teams in the Big Ten that's joined the conference, the uh, USC's, the UCLA's, the Washington's, who are going to have some issues, as you mentioned, Mark, and some of the other uh, teams that have uh, expectations. Ohio State finally getting an opportunity to get past Michigan, something we haven't had to say for the first time in a few years. James Franklin has done a fine job since he's been at Penn State. I wouldn't be surprised if Penn State uh, makes it in with uh, a ranking five through eight as far as the five through eight seeds go. I expect a good year out of uh, uh, Penn State. As far as a team that um, may take a fall, and I'm looking forward to this game, Texas has those great expectations, and I will say that if they lose their season-ending game, to their biggest rival for many, many years, Texas A&M, now that they are both members of the SEC, that may cost Texas an opportunity to make the college football playoffs. Tony, let me ask you, can we give Andy a pass or a flyer on including Penn State and Alabama as possible <laughs> surprise teams? It's, uh, it's the preseason. <laughs> Alabama, Alabama, no, no pass there because they're okay. Alabama. Penn State, yeah, we'll get, give them a pass because everybody hates James Franklin. It's a big game. Uh, you know, big game record. So for, from that, that's a little ballsy. We'll give them that. We'll we'll give them Penn State as a surprise team. The thumbs up, thumbs down on Alabama because the right. is a heck of a coach, and they, they always are in top of the recruiting. Yeah. The, the only question, the only retort I'll have to that is, when is the last time you saw Alabama at double digit odds to win the national championship? You no, have to no, probably no. you probably have to go back to Saban's first or second year. Well, well that's right. Yeah, and, and, and the schedule is going to be super tough. I I agree there, but out of those two, uh, definitely. Oh, Penn I mean, State's definitely the the longer shot, the more on the le the less likely of the two. Uh, by the yep. way, you did mention, Andy, and this is something that we're going to update on a weekly basis. So, Andy, you, you're saying, is that the only big future play that you've made so yes. far? The only, the only future play. I've not done any season win totals yet, uh, but I'm sure before we do our college preview show, I will have made several of those, whether it be futures. Uh, I like to usually wait about a week or two. I, I actually look for one of the, especially with the expanded playoff this year, and this might be something for people to keep in mind. Look for a highly touted team to lose a big game against a highly touted foe and watch their odds show uh, go up a little bit as a result of that loss because of the fact that there are now going to be eight additional teams for a total of 12. A loss, especially early in the season, is not going to hurt their chances of making it into the playoffs and the odds will be reflected a little bit if you're, if you're looking at a team that might be, say, 12 to 1 right now and they lose let's say to a game to a quality team to another quality foe those 12 to 1 odds might go to 15 to 20 to 1 but their chances may not have diminished 
Hey guys, I want to thank each and every one of you for contributing to our show, our mini college football preview show. If you like what we're doing out there, I highly encourage you to click on the subscribe and like buttons down below. You'd be doing us a huge favor if you do so. And also in the comment or question section, if you drop us a question or a comment, I will send to you a free copy of the playbook preseason football newsletter. Compliments on the house if you fill out a question or a comment on our website so do just that because when we come back next week we're going to be talking about our nfl mini preview season for the nfl football season jim fife will be in the house if you will joining andy Esco, tony mejia and greg de palma as well so until then once again thanks for listening this is mark lawrence reminding you to always to remember to bet with your head not over it and good luck as always